Blessings. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, in the love and in the light of our infinite Creator. I welcome you to join with me going through the archives of LL Research and uncovering some gems of spiritual knowledge. And now we shall speak on the subject of forgiveness. In working with the self, the most powerful tool we have is forgiveness. The mind brings us lots of information about our situation, which we can analyze, but that takes us just so far. We're left feeling unworthy. One wanderer says, The problem is I don't know how to love myself, at least not yet. I'm learning how at the age of 25. I don't want to be so hard on myself, but I don't know how to stop. How do I, how do I go easier on myself? How do I love myself better? Another says, This part about judging is very difficult one to deal with. It is so easy to fall into berating oneself for even the smallest thing. And then there's judging others, which is equally difficult and such an enormous challenge. It is just something I have to keep working at and try not to get upset when I fail. Self-judgment is so very natural. Those of Hatan say, You will hold yourself accountable again and again, and must go through the pain of your own damnation. Yet always the handle of the door to faith is ready to be turned, but you as a spirit must turn it, and must go through that door into self-forgiveness and awareness of infinite redemption and newness. A resting place for all eternity. It takes very little faith to do very, very much. So you need not attempt to live entirely faithful lives. When first you get the idea to live faithfully, but rather see yourself as one whose journey is one of learning and whose way of learning is that of making the errors and correcting them. For in learning it would not be possible to be always correct, else one would not be learning. One would have nothing to learn. Thus you may gaze at yourself with mercy, for you are learning and you are a beginner. We remain beginners, how do we begin to forgive? Those of QO say, to want to is enough. The desire to forgive is enough with which to begin. If one places conditions upon the forgiveness, then one is beginning in a fashion which will yet require refinement. For to forgive another, truly one must erase all conditions. There is the giving of freedom by removing conditions, the allowing and accepting of free will by removing conditions. The gift freely given is the one with the greatest value, shall we say. It seems a lot easier to forgive others than to forgive the self. We can even feel triumphant as we find our ability to let people off the hook. Thinking, feeling that someone has done something to me is the thought and the feeling of a victim. I am someone's victim. That person victimized me. It's the power of the illusion that allows us to divide between the victim and the victimizer. The thought that I need to forgive or to be forgiven is an expression of illusion. 
I prefer to think that I create the things that happen in my life as opportunities to grow. If someone does something to me, I have two choices. Be a victim or recognize that I arranged with this person on another level to have this experience with me. This person has agreed to be my catalyst. This person is giving me a gift. It is then for me to recognize the purpose of the lesson, release the person of responsibility for my discomfort, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and then be thankful for the opportunity. These are authentic statements of lessons learned, but in general, loving others is by far easier than loving and forgiving the self. And Mary's note about this reveals the amount of effort behind her aha experience. Please be my witness. I forgive myself for my place in all of my transgressions. Light bulb! That's what it means in the Lord's Prayer. When we pray, forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's been there all the time, right in front of my nose. Those of Lot, we say, you come to a respect and an honoring and a loving and a nurturing of yourself. The key to forgiveness of others is the forgiveness of the self. Release, release, release. Give back to the forces of the universe those energies which are easily absorbed in infinity and leave them not to pollute your own feelings, your mind, or your heart, but rather let forgiveness flow as a sweet river under the surface of all that you do and say. Sweet, peaceful, powerful forgiveness. How clarifying it feels when it comes. That's the thing about self-judgment and judgment in general. It distorts perceptions and destroys peace. What Wanderer's writing to me expressed the most is that wonderful feelings of relief when they see that they can set themselves free of the mistakes of the past by forgiving themselves in the present. Your question, what advice do you have to give other Wanderers? My answer, forgive yourself. Love is your center. Forgive others. Love is the center of all. First contact with your center, then you will know the center of all. Go forth and co-create with the all. New dreams, new realities, a new beginning. Wonderful advice. Begin anew and be free. It may hurt too much to feel free right away. When forgiveness takes place, there is a little death. And sometimes not so very small a death indeed. For sometimes that which is to be forgiven has been held in a hard heart for a long time. It is natural to fear death, yet the road to joy, or shall we say, the way to perceive joy along the road we all travel, is to rush towards whatever oblivion must be embraced in order to forgive. For the creation that springs forth from the heart to one who has truly forgiven is a beautiful and fresh manifestation. So the end of the little death of letting go of judgment is a new world in which we see with new eyes. In forgiveness is personal freedom. When you are in a state of fearlessness and forgiveness, 
then you may see with clearer eyes that which you wish to do that shows the most compassion for all concerned. Marty puts it this way, I feel forgiving oneself doesn't necessarily have to mean reinforcing any negative characteristic or action. It can merely be the acceptance of what was or is exactly as it was, is, or will be, including an acceptance of the illusion of needing forgiveness. Some years ago, some of my closest friends were bemoaning the past, all 18 years of it, and things that they had done or not done. They were caught up in the tremendous feelings of guilt and regret, they confronted me when I honestly did not feel any regrets. They drilled me for hours, thinking for sure there must be something I regretted. I realized some time before that, after beating myself up over such things, that in each case I had done the best I could at each particular stage of my evolution. Even the times I did nothing or was lazy, or whatever. It was still the best I could have done at the time. I had learned something in each and every situation and could not see having regrets for such learning or experiences. It was perfect for the moment, and it is perfect still. It could not have been any other way than how it was at that time. That makes it perfect. I cannot feel the need for forgiveness of self or others when I see the perfection in all of it. Perhaps that is what forgiveness of self is, absolving the thought against our self or other self is setting it free, releasing it. Marty makes it sound so doable. His sage attitude has enabled him to shepherd a couple of good wanderer groups through the years. If what he suggests seems impossible to us, we are not alone. It seems hard sometimes to ask for help, but that is what we need to do. Those of QO encourage us. It is not possible to either forgive self or other self without a release of that self and an acceptance of help, for there is help at the core of your being waiting to be accessed, waiting to be asked. For the infinite creator in infinite love and infinite patience sits in a humble chair in a little corner of your heart waiting to be called upon, waiting to be brought into the center of the heart, waiting to be noticed, waiting to be asked. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Deity, and that Logos was Deity, and that Deity is love, and that love is you. At the heart of your being lies all the resources that you will ever, ever need. At the heart of your being lies infinite truth, infinite power, infinite strength. If we cannot seem to go within and find that truth, power, and strength, that is what prayer and meditation are for. If you wish to speed the process of forgiveness, we may suggest that you take the object which has not been forgiven by you and hold that object within the heart and mind, enveloped and encircled in light, light infinite and light inimitable, hoping and praying for every good for that which you cannot forgive. Thus, you are engaging a deeper portion of yourself to begin opening doors, so that that which is unforgivable to the conscious mind slowly becomes that which must be forgiven. It cannot be forced. It cannot be taught. 
and when someone attempts to persuade the seeker into forgiveness and does so on its own energy, then as soon as the intermediary removes itself, the hardness of the heart returns. That hardness of heart can also be seen to be a kind of disease that actually affects the heart. Questioner, then you are saying that cancer is quite easily healed mentally and is a good teaching tool because it is easily healed mentally and once the entity forgives... The other self at whom he is angry, the cancer will disappear. Is this correct? I am Ra. This is partially correct. The other portion of healing has to do with forgiveness of self and greatly heightened respect for the self. This may conveniently be expressed by taking care in dietary matters. This is quite frequently a part of the healing and forgiving process. Your basic premise is correct. We can look at physical disease as it manifests in ourselves and ask our inner selves if there is anger, resentment, judgment, or other negative emotional material trapped in the body. For example, I feel sure that the onset of severe synopsis of rumor Ruminoid arthritis in my life at the age of 25 were related to my first husband leaving me that March and Don first asking me to marry him that November and then deciding he really did not want to be married in the earthly sense. I had the illness diagnosed when I was 13, but I did not, but it did not trouble me until this tough time. Twelve years later, I had worked with and greatly improved my health now. I have worked with and greatly improved my health now. But by the time I was able to come to the very heart of forgiveness, the initial damage showing on x-rays was done and I live with those changes in my body. It might have helped if I had been given a strong sense of self-worth as a child. But I had two perfectionists for parents, and their relating to me was largely based on the techniques of criticism and asking. What is wrong with this picture? Those of QO say, There are crystallized nuggets of pain, emotional and spiritual pain, that are locked deeply within the personality and character of each seeker. Any attempt to analyze or therapize them into a new configuration is limited in its success because it is not seen by most therapeutic entities that the issue is forgiveness. The deeply buried programming and catalysts of pain are seen as that which need to be taken out, to be pulled up by the roots, seen, in other words, as weeds in a garden. And yet this approach only tends to build walls thick enough to protect one from those crystallized areas of pain without coming into a balanced awareness of that pain. One cannot give it away, one can only give away what one has forgiven oneself for feeling, and the triggers for this forgiveness are different for each seeker. The key, however, is forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others, forgiveness of humanity. Those of Laetos add, whenever you catch yourself being negative about the self, Remind yourself that you are an orphan on a very unusual planet and that you must mother yourself and nurture yourself and care within your heart for yourself until those sore and painful places are indeed nurtured and healed at last. 
until there is forgiveness and redemption within the knowledge of the heart, not only the mind. Then you may tune upwards, seeking ever higher for a more beautiful, lovely, and perfect ideal, a more clarified and fine version of love divine. Those of Ra tell us that even planet Earth can be healed with forgiveness. Questioner can you describe the mechanism of the planetary healing? I am Ra. Healing is a process of acceptance, forgiveness, and, if possible, restitution. The restitution not being available in time-space. There are many among your peoples now attempting restitution while in the physical. I hope we do continue to make some progress towards healing the planet we have come to for this life. It will thrive more and more as we heal our own selves with forgiveness.